Coming up on the season premiere of UMass Sports Insider, it's an all-new era for men and men football. A new coach, new faces, new stadium, and new division. We'll give you an in-depth look into the preparation for the inaugural season in the MAC. And we'll show you how the players have been working hard on and off the field to get the new phase of the program off to a good start. A new series for UMass Sports Insider starts now. Now, this is the UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Last Thursday, UMass football stepped onto the big stage, playing its first game at the bowl subdivision level at Connecticut in the debut for head coach Charlie Molnar. While the result was a loss, this play by senior Darren Fellin was shown on highlight reels all over the country. Another piece of evidence that UMass football has jumped onto the national stage. Well, hello and welcome to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host, Josh Maurer, and this year we're rolling out a new bi-weekly format that we promise will give you more in-depth access to your favorite Minute Men and Minute Women teams. Make sure you watch from now until March. Of course, today we start with football, where the Minute Men are getting ready to open the home schedule against the Indiana Hoosiers from the Big Ten Conference. So let's check in with Coach Charlie Molnar and see how the Minute Men are preparing for the matchup. Our approach to this game, Number one is we have to establish a run game offensively. Uh, the last game, our run game was almost non-existent and it really affected every single thing that we did. Offense never really was able to get on track and it certainly affected our ability to play action pass and throw the football. Defensively, excellent on first down. We have to do better on third down. We have to get off the field, give the ball back to the offense. Special teams, we need to make sure that we protect our punter. Our snaps have to be perfect. Our punter has to get the ball off even under duress. Whenever you play a Big Ten team, this is for certain, you're going to play against an offensive and defensive line that are very, very big and very, very physical. And Indiana is no different than every other team in the Big Ten. They really have big, strong guys on both lines. Their linebackers are very, very good, uh, great cover guys in the secondary. As far as their offense, they have a quarterback that's a dual threat guy that we're going to have to work really hard to protect. The game kicks off at 3.30 on Saturday. Be sure to get to Gillette early and experience Minute Fan Park outside of Patriot Place. It promises to be an exciting afternoon. If you can't make it to Foxborough, you can watch the game on ESPN3 or listen on the radio or internet on the UMass Sports Network. It's been quite a journey for the Minute Minute program over the last year, heading into the FBS era with a new head coach. Let's take a look back at what it's been like over the last nine months. Thrilled to announce the football program of the Commonwealth's flagship campus, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, will join the Mid-American Conference and move into the football bowl subdivision, the nation's top tier of college football. UMass will begin playing a full conference football schedule in 2012 and be eligible to compete for the conference championship in 2013. I jumped for joy. I uh, Finally, I said, finally, we did it. We, we did it because we've been working on it for so long. We're going to have a team on national stage. It's going to be great. Um, it's going to be great for the program, great for the school. It's something that we've always talked about in every recruiting class since, uh, I think, 1970s, talking about 1A. You are ushering in a whole new era the history of UMass football and it is so important and we are so excited about it. This is a guy who really gets it. This is a guy who wants to take over a program and leave his mark, that wants to build something from where we are and take it to someplace very, very special. I'm going to turn it over to the head coach of the UMass Minute Minutemen, Charlie Molnar. We're going public. We're a stock. It's new. Buy in today because the price is going to skyrocket. This place is going to the top. And you guys can jump in right now as, as the uh, initial stockholders in this. But we are going to go to the top, and I'm asking you to join me, all the people of New England, not just Massachusetts. He said I'm the man of the hour. I really would like to be the man of the decade, the man of the next 25 years. I would like to be your football coach on the day I retire. I plan on being part of UMass from the day I got hired on December 7th until I finally step off the field after my last game as a head football coach. I've made a commitment to the University of Massachusetts. I've put my professional life in the hands of John McCutcheon and you are supporters. I intend to make this a rousing success and how I'm going to do it is like this. They say it takes a village to raise a child. 
I say it takes a nation to raise a football team. The UMass Nation. Woo! Uh, today's a great day for us. It starts today with the captains uh, of the past. And I'm really, really glad to get this opportunity to have these captains, these great men of UMass history, to get a chance to mingle with our seniors. And part of my, my purpose of this meal today is to let our seniors see what a great leader is. 1948, I started playing here in 1942. And as I mentioned to a couple of the others, after one semester, I almost flunked out, and the war went on to save me from flunking out. <laughs> and, uh, I want to thank Coach. Um, this is, for me, I, I'm loving this. I don't know about you guys. You young kids, you don't understand what the kind of education you get now. But the amount of knowledge and leadership and experience in this room is immense. I wish, I wish someone did this for us. I mean, seriously, take this in. These guys are extremely impressive. In the class of 2003, James Ron Hardy and Jeremy Robinson. It's awesome. I mean, I got a chance to be the defensive coordinator, you know, so, you know, it was a great experience to be able to coach those guys and guys that I play with that are outstanding players and, and let them run around and, and, and make plays. So it's, it's truly a blessing to be back and glad, and, you know, something that's going to be an annual thing and, and being able to come back and see it's awesome. Uh, it was great just playing with a bunch of the guys from, from the past and, and meeting new guys, young and old, and just all bonding together. I mean, we're all UMass football, so it was a great experience to have everyone out there on the field, everyone running around, and, you know, no one got hurt. That's the most important thing, and everyone had a great time. Uh, me day, it's, it's been an experience so far. I'm glad to be a part of it. You know, we flew in here yesterday, got to meet a few uh, other other members, uh, the MAC uh, team players from the MAC. You know, had a little dinner, and um, this morning it was it was just uh, interviews, and they asked you questions. You just got to tell them how you feel about the upcoming season, really, and how exciting you are to play. Yeah, I, I feel like today just actually hit it on the head. Like it actually clicked now that yeah, we're we're in the MAC. It's no longer like transition, and and it's just. Like me and me and Quentin were talking about it earlier, we just can't wait to play after being a part of all this. We're just excited for the season to start. This year's a lot faster. We just want our guys to be competitive when we start the day off with a competitive game. Intensity is up very fast, like everything's quick, 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 reps, 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 not a lot of break. To make sure that they finished everything they did as hard as they could. We do um, longer practices, more intense practices now, and I feel that they're going to help us in the long run. All of that leading up to the start of the football season, you can see it's already been quite a ride. Well, it's time for us to step aside for the first time on the program. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll meet one of the most experienced leaders of the Minutemen offense and show you what to expect if you come to Gillette Stadium early on Saturday. Stay tuned. 6.9 is a breakthrough. This, the lightest ever.
the UMass license plate says it all. You don't have to be a sports star. Any UMass fan can be a star with a UMass license plate. Ride with UMass pride. Order your license plate at UMassAlumni.com. All proceeds benefit UMass. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. UMass's last home football game came last November on the 19th, a senior day loss to James Madison. It was the final game at McGurk Stadium for the next couple of seasons as the Minutemen said goodbye to their longtime home with the knowledge they would be heading into Foxborough beginning in 2012. Well, that first home game will take place Saturday against Indiana, and there will be plenty of activities going on on and off the field. Here's Steve Tall with a look at what to expect. Warren P. McGurk Stadium has been the site of the Minutemen's home openers since 1965. But today, the team will run out onto their new home turf for the next couple years, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. A move set in motion when UMass announced it was moving to Division I. Uh, on behalf of the Kraft Group and Gillette Stadium, and how happy we are to brand with UMass. But the maroon and white isn't a completely unfamiliar sight at the Patriot Place after an annual neutral site matchup between UMass and UNH was instituted for the past two seasons. This matchup proved to be a very popular venue for the UMass faithful. It's like a dream come true. I mean, I've always thought about this, and I see the emotion, and you got, you know, 35,000 seats sold already. This is fantastic, it's unbelievable! Ready for the game, I can't wait. I love the UMass band, it's actually one of my favorite parts, but it's gonna be a great game. Go, go you. Let's go you! <laughs> this is wonderful. Um, we just, we're so excited about this all week. My sister and I are graduates of UMass, and we love the school, we love all the sporting events. And to have us at Gillette Stadium, it's just incredible, and we, we really thank thank everybody, the Alumni Association, for putting this on. Thank you, Steve. When the UMass offense takes to the field Saturday, the line will be anchored by a fifth-year senior from Maryland who's become one of the most successful blockers at UMass in recent years. Here's Hugh Zeitlin. This season of change for the UMass football team has even more meaning for seniors who have been on the squad since they were freshmen. That includes center Quentin Sales. It's exciting. It's refreshing. Um, just for everything to be new and fresh and the motivation from that, everything being new. Um, make the transition a lot better. Um, even the coaches that new coaches that are coming in, we have a lot of pressure resumes if you, if you read up on them. So it's, just, it's a different feel. Um, everything that's, that's offered to us because of the transition it makes it a lot better. Part of the change for sales and crew is a new philosophy on offense. They previously ran a pro style formation. You're getting away from that and it's, it's spread, it's no huddle, uh, everything around the ball, around the line. So uh, I, I think it's like a like kind of modern form of offense. I think a lot of teams are going to that. A lot of high school teams are going to that. We had a, a great strength and conditioning program this summer with Coach Bob Trondo, um, getting us, getting us um, in shape since since May till now, just preparing it for, for camp. And it's been carrying it over well. A lot of guys are on a lot more wind, a lot stronger, a lot faster because of that. So I think that's 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 carrying over well for the um, for the offense and defense. Sales says when he arrived in Amherst in 2008, there were rumblings about a move to the football bowl subdivision. He's excited that it actually happened. For a long time, I would hear rumors about it every offseason. I would just ignore um, until it really happened. Um, and and I really I, it really hit me when Coach Moore and I was hired, and I read about him and I got a chance to meet him. So. 
um, it's definitely different. Um, the coaching staff before was a good staff too, but this new staff is just bringing a lot more excitement in the program. The Minutemen are still a few weeks away from opening conference play, but Sale says the new MAC competition is fresh on the minds of him and his teammates. Respect to them because they, they're good competition. I feel like um, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of better than them on TV last year and years before, so to get a chance to play them um, is exciting. But I think, I think we're going to make a run for it. I think we can get some ball games if we stay focused. Thank you, Hugh, and good luck to Quinton Sales and the offense on Saturday. When we come back, we'll take a look at how the Minutemen spent time giving back to the community over the summer. Stay tuned. The UMass Hotel and Conference Center was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, the UMass Hotel and Conference Center is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, the UMass Hotel and Conference Center has it all. 6.9 is a breakthrough. 6.9 is a physics lesson. Is ever. Book your wedding with award-winning UMass Catering. We can host, design, and plan your big event from full breakfasts, lunches, to elegant wedding receptions and dinners. UMass Catering can host events in one of our ballrooms at Overlook Campus, Tented Outdoors, or our own Renaissance House. The possibilities are endless. Let the culinary team at UMass Catering bring creative menus and exceptional service to your wedding day. Special rates for members of the UMass family and alumni. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. Since being hired as head football coach, Charlie Molnar has made giving back to those less fortunate a priority for his players who spent a lot of time in the community this past summer. Here's Steve Toll with a look. I think it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. And what I want our young men to do is get, get exposed to as many different issues that are out there in the Amherst and the great and the, really in the Pioneer Valley. And look, and they're really, really fortunate young men. They're blessed. And we want them to go out and to go into the community and give back. One that was uh, really fun for our football team was the uh, uh, autism awareness. Uh, we, helped, uh, we helped in the setup of the uh, 5K race. Coach Molnar um, really got behind this event and got the team and all of his coaches out here today to run, to volunteer, and it's just fabulous. It really is. You know, everybody to just take part in things like these when they get a chance to, you know, help out because I don't, I don't think enough people uh, are aware of this, this problem and uh, this, you know, disorder and uh, I think it's more people were aware, you know, we get to do more stuff about it. Yeah, the uh, Special Olympics thing really turned out to be great. It was at the beginning of summer camp, so we couldn't uh, get many of our players involved, but the ones who did really came back touched. Uh, one of the great things that happened uh, at, the, at dinner that night, uh, our players got a real chance to sit down with the uh, Special Olympians and really get a chance to share and to talk to them. And, and the Special Olympians just lit up when our guys would uh, spend the time with them and interact. So it was really, really a good, it was really a good experience, not only for the Olympians, but for the UMass football players. It's a great thing watching um, having the athletes come in and uh, seeing the soccer players, uh, men and women and football players. It really means a lot to these athletes, seeing they're participating, you know, coming in, socializing with them. Um, I think it's a great thing to do uh, that type of stuff with these guys. And UMass has been um, a really good school. Um, my family's been to you know, school for, uh, in the past, and brothers have, so, uh, so it's been a really good school. I'm going to thank you for UMass for doing this. We do care a lot about the community, and we do want to reach out to uh, make sure everybody is aware that you know we want we want to be part of a community. We want to we don't just want to play football. We want to change people's lives and make a difference. 
reaction has been great. You know, they, they love they love athletes. You know, they love what we do. So, you know, we want to come out and support them also. They're athletes also. They work hard at, every, at their sport, and so do we. So, it's kind of like you know, it's a we're kind of similar in, in ways. Some of the areas that we touched upon when uh, visiting uh, uh, Veterans Hospital, uh, visiting the elementary schools, reading to children, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we, we've done some work with the elderly. We did a clothing drive. We've done a, a, a Habitat for Humanity. We also do, did a food drive. And we'll continue to do things throughout. As the Minutemen get set to take on Big Ten foe Indiana, we introduce you to a player who knows a lot about that conference, having spent the early part of his career at Michigan before deciding to transfer back closer to home for his fifth year. Let's go back to Hugh Zeitlin. It was close to home, and you know that was definitely a big plus. And you know, it was an up and rising, you know, football program just moving up to the D1A. And I just like, you know, the changes I saw. I liked all the coaches, and it just seemed like the right fit for me. With just one season of eligibility left, running back Michael Cox chose carefully when transferring from Michigan to UMass. The prospect of playing under a new head coach is nothing new to the former Wolverine. I committed to Lloyd Carr, and then when I got there, Coach Rod was coach. And then uh, we had Brady Hope last, so that's definitely, you know, I, I've gotten used to it just being through all of it, you know. It's definitely a change, you know, wherever you go and when changes like that happen, but I mean, you just have to learn to adapt to it. And coaches like to run, you know, their program definitely. That's probably the hardest part. I mean, at first, you know, like when I first came to Michigan and everything, I mean, obviously with the coaching change, like learning the plays and everything, that was, you know, kind of hard. But I mean, I'm, I'm used to it now, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not too bad. Cox says coach Charlie Molnar didn't have to work too hard to sell him on the move to Amherst. He was impressed with what he saw. I have one more year left, and so, you know, I had to make sure, you know, this is the place, you know, where I'm going to be, going to get my opportunity and everything. But, you know, he didn't really have to sell me on too much because, I mean, I kind of saw, you know, what he was doing here. And, you know, I just saw, you know, the opportunity I would have coming here. The fifth-year senior will have a unique chance next week when UMass visits Michigan. The running back says it will take some getting used to to be in Ann Arbor as a visitor. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a little weird because it's my first time, obviously, going back and playing, uh, <laughs> you know, a team I used to play for. But, you know, it's definitely going to be fun. Yeah, I know my old team, they're going to try to, you know, <laughs> get me, but I'm going to get through too, though. This week marks a big moment for Cox and his family. The Dorchester native plans on having a lot more family and attendance, with home games now just down the road in Foxborough. Yeah, it just makes it a whole lot easier, you know, <laughs> being only 30-minute drive away than a 14-hour drive. So it's going to be really fun, you know, especially because I'm a big Patriots fan, too, and everything. So just getting a chance to play there, it's, it's going to be real fun. Great to have Michael Cox in the fold at running back for the Minutemen. When we come back from our final break, we'll take a look at our famous lighter side and see what embarrassing songs the players have on their iPods getting ready for the game. Uh-oh, that's coming up when we return. Sports Insider. Welcome back. It's our final segment of the season premiere on UMass Sports Insider. Don't forget the Minutemen football team opens up against Indiana at Gillette Stadium Saturday afternoon. Back by very popular demand, it's our weekly lighter side. And everybody seems to have some sort of music playing device these days. And on that, you know there's a song or two that the person wouldn't want to admit to. So we asked some UMass athletes this week, what's the most embarrassing song on your iPod? Let's check out the answers. It's actually more of an artist than a song, and that's Taylor Swift. Because everyone knows that she's good, but 
you know, getting prepared for a game. I uh, was listening to a playlist one time, and the song Teardrops, my guitar came on real loud. I thought that was kind of embarrassing, but it is a good song, so I'm proud of it. Well, there's times you get pumped up, and there's times where you just kind of need to ease up a little bit, get the tension out, and I think it's a great song for that, to get the tension out. You know? My friend Chaz Thompson, he has some very embarrassing songs on his album. Oh. We're going to start with the Backstreet Boys. He knows the whole dance, he knows, he knows everything about it. I don't have an embarrassing song on my iPod, but my man Antoine Thart, oh, yeah? he listens to um, Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again. Um, I heard him blast night in his room this Saturday, so I just wanted to put him on blast real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's just a rumor going around. It's completely not true. There's no dance? No, nah, he's just trying to be a funny guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the parties, he's always doing that. He always tells him, put on Oops, I Did It Again. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I'm not sure if it's still there, but I used to. I know I used to have the uh, Reading Rainbow theme song on my iPod. So I, well, I remember watching Reading Rainbow when I was when I was younger, and you know I liked the show, and so yeah, it just sort of calms you down. It's a nice, fun song. So I always listen to it every now and then. You know, and I was just trying to have some fun and, and relax a little bit. I like most of her music. Um, there's a new song that just came out. It's called "I'm Never Ever Ever Getting Back with You." I think that's what it's called, and that's kind of mine and my girlfriend's song. So it's. Uh, might be, might be one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. <laughs> your, and your girlfriend's song. She's okay with it? She is. It was her idea. She told me about it. She called me up and she's like, you have to listen to this new song. It's just it's just like our relationship. So I listened to it and uh, here she was right. Uh, I say probably Circle of Life, Lion King song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I always, I always loved that movie like just growing up as a kid and stuff. And I just had it on my iPod. So. <laughs> Any other Disney songs that you like? Uh... <laughs> She was like all the ones I don't know, a uh, song from like Pocahontas and I don't know, all, all those Disney songs. I got a whole soundtrack of that. So. I'm a big cartoon buff, so I got some SpongeBob on there. So I got some SpongeBob uh, theme songs. It's called it's called the fun songs. Like uh, F is for friends who do things together. U is for you and me. And it's for anywhere, anytime, down in deep blue sea. I don't know the name of it, but the Titanic song. The theme song is the Titanic song, my iPod. My sister, you know, she gave me a playlist and was on it. And, it came on shuffle, I really liked it, so I kept it on. It depends on the night, you know. If I'm feeling really, you know, in the mood, I'll blast it, driving around, maybe listen to it, doing homework down low. Depends, you know. Depends on the mood. Thanks, guys, a great job. Well, that'll do it for our season premiere of UMass Sports Insider. Don't forget, the Minutemen football team opens up against Indiana at Gillette Stadium Saturday. We hope to see you there. We'll have a new episode coming up next week. Until then, I'm Josh Maurer. Have a great weekend. The UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola, Adidas, UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association, and UMassAthletics.com.